I'm Kara Wilson. I work at the NOAA Southwest Fishery Science Center in Monterey, California, and today I'm going to be talking about how ERDAP can provide easy access to remote sensing data. My co-authors are Dale Robinson and Bob Simons, who are both also from the Southwest Fishery Science Center. ERDAP was developed at the Southwest Fishery Science Center by Bob Simons. It provides a simple, consistent way to subset and download data. The data can also be visualized in customi customizable graphs, Data can be downloaded in over 30 formats, both graphs and data. ERDAP is a RESTful service, meaning that the data requests are completely defined by a URL, which allows for easy access from computer programs like R or MATLAB, as well as allowing machine-to-machine -machine access. Over 80 ERDAPs exist worldwide. In this presentation, I will show examples using the ERDAP maintained jointly by the Southwest Fishery Science Center Environmental Research Division and the West Coast Node of NOAA's Coast Watch Program. This ERDAP has over a thousand oceanographic satellite data sets on it, and most of them have global coverage. Most of the products are also available on daily, weekly, or monthly composites. This is the main ERDAP interface, and it can be a little overwhelming at first. Data sets are listed alphabetically by their data set title, which is visible in the center of the page. And there's also different columns of the table, which provide different information, such as the metadata, source institution, and the local data set ID. In this presentation, I will focus on the graphing ability of ERDAP, but it's important to remember that the real power of ERDAP is its ability to provide machine-to-machine -machine data access. To download a data set, click the data link to the left of the data set title. To create a graph of the data, click on the graph column to the left of the data set title. And that will bring up the online interface to create custom graphs. Data can be shown as maps, time series, and half milers, which is a hybrid map with latitude and longitude in one axis and time on the other to show both temporal and spatial variability. I'll show an example of one of these later in the presentation. The graphical interface provides a user-friendly way to create a customizable graph, but since all data requests are given as a URL, one can make changes by directly changing the URL. In order to do that, it helps to understand the grammar of the ERDAP URL data request. Here, the, tap rec the text wrapped around the slide is an actual URL. I've marked different parts of it in different colors to highlight what they are. The red text marks the dataset ID, the green text the file type, in this case a PNG file, so this will produce an image. The purple text is the variable name, in this case sea surface temperature, and the black text the, te the time range and the blue text the latitude and longitude ranges. So this URL will produce a map of sea surface temperature for September 2019 for the North Pacific, which we'll see on the next slide. So this image here was produced by the URL on the left, which was the URL we were looking at in the previous slide. Now, let's modify the graph by making some changes, a simple change to the URL. Let's change the variable name from sea surface temperature to sea surface temperature anomaly. By making that one simple change in the URL, we are now looking at the sea surface temperature anomaly for this region. And the red, the ve red values in the map are showing the extent of the marine heat wave that has developed in the Pacific in the last few years. We can see how long this heat wave has been around by making a half miler graph. To do that, we will take a cross section along 30 degrees north, the line indicated on the map, and plot it over time. We can do this by going to the Make a Graph page and changing the y-axis from latitude to time, as it has is indicated on in the insert on the left of the slide. Here we are looking at SST along 30 degrees north from 1985 at the bottom of the screen to the end of 2019 at the top of the figure. We can see that while most of the last 20 years there have been warmer than usual temperatures in the central Pacific, only in the past few years has this phenomena spread to the coast as can be seen in the upper right-hand graph, east of 120 degrees west. I provided a very quick introduction to ERDAP capabilities. We have an online tutorial which goes into more detail about how to use ERDAP and goes over many of the examples that I showed today. It is available at the link shown here. The previous slides showed examples of using ERDAP's web pages to download or make customizable graphs. Since ERDAP has an underlying RESTful service, one can make requests for data from programs like CURL or WGET, or by writing scripts which automate the process of making hundreds, thousands, or even millions of requests. We have an online tutorial that demonstrates ways to extract data from ERDAP using the R software, which is shown in the link here. I'm happy to take any questions now, or feel free to contact me or any of my co-authors by email. Thank you.